Right mates, how's it going? In today's video, it's chapter 10 of Tides of Darkness by Aaron Rosenberg. Much longer video this week, plus a whole bunch of my possibly offensive sounding dwarf accent. Let's go! Galatar to King Randor! Come in you royal boob! There! Thane! Look there! Kurdren Wildhammer, Chief Thane of the Wildhammer Clan, wheeled his griffin Skyree around and looked to where Farrand was pointing. Aha! Movement! Figures! Traipsing through the forest! Be them trolls? They were certainly the same shade of green as trolls. But no, these figures walked the ground rather than skimming the branches Tarzan style, and their footsteps were too heavy, too loud, too careless to be those bummels from the forest that the dwarves hated ever so much. Gerdrin tapped Skyrie with his heels, and the griffin cawed lightly in response, before diving down a little bit for a closer look. And as Thane caught a clear view of one of the creatures, he frowned. What the bloody hell was that? Heavily built, heavily armed. Whatever it was, it was equipped for war. So Kurdrin pulled back on the reins and Skyrie retreated a little bit. Back to the others. I told you. Uglies. In our forest. Aye. You're right. They are ugly. And they're intruding. There'll be a lot of them though. And they'll be hard to hit as long as they stay beneath the trees. Are we just to let them traits across our lands then? Oh no. We'll just have to be scaring them out into the open. Come on lads. Let's get back home. Don't worry. I have a few ideas. We'll soon make it clear to these greenskins they kinda just waltz through the hinterlands. You there. Paladin. Trillian glanced up to see an elf ranger approaching. He hadn't seen or heard their approach, but he was used to them sneaking up by now. Yeah. The orcs are in the hinterlands. And they're meeting up with the trolls there. Trillian noted the hint of disgust in that last part. Elves hated trolls. That much was obvious. You're certain they're allies? Not just crossing paths? Of course I'm sure. I heard them talking. They've got a pact of some sort. They're planning on attacking Airy Peak. And then moving up into Quell the Lass. Oh, that explained why the elf was a little bit agitated. I'll let Lothar know. Don't worry. We'll stop them before they can get anywhere near your homeland. The ranger nodded, though he didn't exactly look convinced. But he then buggered off, and Duralian decided that now would be a good time to go join the others. So he did. The orcs are planning to attack Airy Peak. One of the rangers just told me. They've allied with the forest trolls as well. Lothar nodded, and then turned his focus back to the ever-present map on the table. It'll be tough, taking the fight to them in the forest. We'll be forced to leave our ballista behind. Then again, they'll not be able to marshal their forces well either. We could pick off small groups of orcs without having to worry about them sending their entire army to one location. Dwarves would make strong allies. If we help them, they may agree to help us in return. We could certainly use them and their griffins. Lothar then looked up at Turalyon. Rally the troops. We're headed into the forest to save the dwarves. Wildhammers, attack! Kurdren Wildhammer blew a blast on his horn, and the Wildhammer's first ambush commenced. But instead of diving down to attack the Greenskins directly, Kurdren unsheathed his Stormhammer and started striking the trees. And as he did, leaves, berries and needles rained down on the orcs below. And they didn't quite know what to make of all of this, all they knew for certain was that there was a sudden onslaught of foliage dropping down on them and they didn't like it at all. So they cheesed it a little bit, headed towards the nearest small clearing, which was exactly what Kurdren had planned for them to do. As the first greenskin entered the clearing, he had just about enough time to look up and see a large hammer flying directly towards his face. You're too ugly to be in me forest, you bastard! The hammer made its way back to Kurdren's hand and he loosed it again, smashing a second orc and then a third and the rest of his lads were striking as well. So the forest was filled with the sounds of orcs being smashed and getting really annoyed about this whole situation. The skirmish was over pretty quickly. Whatever these creatures were, they were slow and not used to facing an airborne attack. That taught them to look up. We'll send out another team soon. Mayhap they'll learn to give Airy Peak away to birth. Get ready. They should be close by. Turalyon and Khadgar nodded as the paladin and wizard strained their eyes, trying to pierce the gloom of the trees and stuff. There. Turalyon pointed both Lothar and Khadgar followed his gesture and saw a flicker of movement. Too low to be a bird and too steady to be a snake or an insect or whatever. It was definitely something the size of a man walking through the forest. Got him. Khadgar, let the others know. We'll keep watch in the meantime. Lothar then turned to look at Turalyon directly. If they look like they're getting away, we'll just have to give them a reason to turn back this way again, eh? Yes, sir. Turalyon grinned. He was ready this time. Sure, he was still nervous, 
but he no longer worried about freezing up or turning tail. He could do this. We've lost Tialak, Angus as well, and two more that are too winded to continue fighting. What happened? The Greenskins, that's what. They were ready for us. They've learned, Thane. The ugly buggers have learned. So they ain't stupid then. Well, we'll just have to hit them before they can react. Tell the lads to come in fast and hard. They're working against gravity and we're working with it. We've got the advantage. Iron Man nodded, but before he could say anything, another dwarf named Beethan burst in. Trolls! We were diving on the greenskins when a pack of forest trolls jumped us. Took out Marie and Sigurdirga. Damn. So they're teamed with the trolls then. Greenskin and greenskin. Those trolls will keep us from using the trees. We need something to even the odds and fast. As if to answer that statement, a third dwarf burst in. This one called Dermid. Humans. A great mass of them. They say they've come to fight off the greenskins. <laughs> they call them orcs. Ancestors be praised. If they can keep them busy enough to forget about their new tactics, we can strike them down from above again. Cadron turned towards the door, already whistling for Skyri. Wild hammers. Let's fly. Now. Lothar spurred his mount and charged, bursting upon a pack of orcs. And they all jumped, clearly surprised because they'd been too busy watching the skies for an attack from above. So the champion and Turalyon made quick work of them. But the young paladin then heard a strange noise. And as he looked up, he saw a tall figure, taller than any orc, but more narrowly built. A troll. The creature then pounced with its spear, but Turalyon raised his shield and responded with a fierce blow of his own. And before the troll had any time to recover, Turalyon smashed it again right in the face. And it was dead. And Turalyon felt really pleased with himself for all of about five seconds before he noticed a second troll, ready to throw a spear directly towards him. He didn't have time to raise his shield or dodge, so he closed his eyes, preparing himself for the worst. But instead of immense pain followed by death, he heard a shriek and opened his eyes to see something amazing. The second troll was dead, and above it hovered a majestic creature, and mounted atop that was a little bearded muscly bloke. The dwarf saw Turalyon looking and grinned, and Turalyon grinned back. With the dwarf's assistance, the humans would no longer have to worry about ambushes from above. They could concentrate on the orcs. This was going to be a piece of piss. A few hours later, Kurdran Wildhammer welcomed the human leaders into his home. The fighting was finally over. Greetings, laddies. And lass. You're a welcome indeed. We feared those beasties had us beat, but your arrival put an end to that. I'm in your debt. You lead the Wildhammers. Aye, I'm Kurdran Wildhammer. Chief Thane. Good. I'm Anduin Lothar, former Knight of Stormwind and now Commander of the Alliance Forces. Lothar then explained about the Horde, his city's fate and all the other stuff. Will you join us? They say they wish to conquer all lands, and they came here on great black iron ships, and they've been through Kazmadan. We've not heard from our kin in Iron Forge for weeks. This explains why. They conquered the mines, used the iron ore for their ships. Aye. We Wildhammers have had many quarrels with the Bronzebeard clan over the years. That's why we left there in the first place. But they're still our cousins. These foul creatures attacked them. Now they've attacked us. If it weren't for your timely aid. Aye, big fella. We will join you. Kurdren extended his hand to Lothar, and the champion accepted the clasp. Thank you. At least we've driven them from the hinterlands. Your home is safe. For now. What about the rest of them? Up north. What did you say? Up north? My scouts say we only saw a fraction of the horde here. The rest turned north. You didn't know this. Lothar then cursed loudly. A faint. And we fell for it. Ah, uh, excuse me. My home was at risk. This was no mere ploy. No, the threat was real. But whoever commands the horde is smart. They knew we'd stop to aid you here. And now they've got distance on us. And they're headed for Quel'Thalas. We have to warn them. We'll rally the troops and set off again. If we move fast, there's no time. You said yourself the Horde now has distance on us. We've lost days already. I'll go myself. No, you'll not go alone. Drellian, take the rest of the cavalry and half the troops. You're in charge. Kadgar, you go with him. Lothar then turned back to Kurdren, who was visibly impressed by the champion. There'll still be orcs left in the forest. Can't risk letting them get behind us as well as in front. I'll stay and make sure the forest is clean. Then we'll move forward and rejoin the others. 
Thank you for your aid. When my forests are once again secured, my warriors and I will accompany you north. Thank you. Well, what are you still doing here? Get moving. And we're leaving it there. Hopefully this one makes up for the shorter vids recently. I did feel kind of bad about last week's because it was only like five minutes long. But, like I said before, gotta stop beating myself up so much about that sort of shiz. As usual, links in the description for the book, my Patreon page, my Discord, all of that stuff. If you enjoyed this video, like, subscribe, all of that bollocks. And all that's left to say is, thanks for watching, and see ya!